so I've got all my bags packed and the van is all cleaned up. I had to get rid of my propane tank and some other things, but today is our last day in the beautiful state of Alaska. So last night we slept in this beautiful Walmart parking lot with a nice view of the mountains just outside of Anchorage. And I'm actually in a rush right now because I woke up an hour and a half late because my alarm didn't go off. And I was supposed to be at this place to drop off my van an hour ago so that I could make it to my flight on time, which is at 12. So now we're kind of in a race against time to get my van to the port so that I can ship my van home. And then from the port to the airport so that I can ship myself home. So I actually arrived in the beautiful city of Anchorage yesterday and I couldn't leave Alaska without at least attempting to catch some fish and do a catch and cook. So yesterday I spent pretty much the entire day fishing for Alaskan salmon. So after I got down to Anchorage, I went over to a bait and tackle shop, rented some waders, a fishing pole, some lures, and headed down to this place called Ship's Creek to see if I could catch myself a silver salmon to cook for the night. And apparently there's a different technique for when you're fishing salmon. So after I waded out into the water, you have to like let out some line on your fishing line, close your bail, and then you kind of just flick it out there over your head and then just drag it in with your fingers as opposed to reeling it in and then just kind of flick it out again over and over and over and over again. And the entire river was like overcrowded with people. So when I first got there, I went over to the side of the river where there was no people and I just kind of practiced my casting because I didn't want to get in people's way. It annoyed people with being the newbie. And then after I got that down, I went over and I joined the pack and we snagged a few fish. We caught one silver and two humpies, but I didn't know this when I went down there, but apparently it is illegal to snag those fish which means if you don't catch them by the mouth and you just kind of hook them by the tail or hook them by the belly or hook them anywhere else other than their mouth you can't legally keep them all of the fish that I caught yesterday were caught because they got snagged by the hook and they didn't catch it in their mouth oh we got one I don't think we caught it by the mouth though so we got one but we can't keep it because they didn't catch them by the mouth the only one that I did catch in its mouth was a humpy, which apparently is not the best eating so I didn't keep it we were looking for a silver and we were looking to catch it by its mouth oh I think I had that one by the mouth too. But sadly, I didn't catch anything. I did film a whole video up until that point, but coming home empty handed and not having a plan for what I wanted to do for the rest of the video just didn't really work for me. So I decided to scrap it. And uh, here we are today, driving to the port to drop off the van and fly home. And also to ship my van from Alaska down to Seattle, there's a bunch of rules I had to follow and a bunch of things I had to do. Like if you'll notice my gas light is on right now because I had to leave the van with less than a fourth of a tank of gas in order for them to accept it and take it on the ship. I wasn't allowed to have any propane in the van. I'm not allowed to have any aerosols or compressed gas or anything like that. So I had to get rid of a lot of stuff like bear spray and bug spray. And then there were a few other things that I had to get rid of. And I'm just really hoping that I got rid of everything that's prohibited so that they accept the van because I already have my flight booked at 12. So if there's anything wrong with dropping off the van, I'm probably gonna miss my flight. So I'm really hoping dropping this van off of the port goes off without a hitch. All right, so we made it to the port, but Apparently, this port is a secure facility, kind of like the oil fields were up in Prudhoe Bay. So I had just had to go through security. I got my little tag, but we made it through, and now we're heading to the place where I dropped the van off. All right, so I just went into the office, checked in the van, got it all packed up, ready to go. Got my bags ready, and now we're just waiting for security to come pick us up and drive us back out of here so we can get an Uber. So I'll check in with you guys once we get there. All right, so we have made it here to the airport in Anchorage. I had to call the Uber from the security checkpoint at the place where I dropped off my van so I couldn't record anything. And then I put my bag in the back of the Uber so I couldn't record anything in the Uber, but we've made it to the airport, just made it through security, grabbed myself some coffee, and now we're looking for gate C1, which I think I see it. It's actually right there, it's the first gate. We have officially completed our journey here in Alaska. I'm flying to my brother's house in San Diego for five or six days while I wait for the van to get shipped because it is Monday right now and the van won't be in Seattle until next Monday. So I'm gonna hang out there in San Diego and then fly back up to Seattle and pick up the van. This Alaskan road trip has been everything I could have wanted and more. It's been so much fun. And honestly, I think I might come back again because this time I drove the Alaskan highway and when I was in my Uber on the way here, the Uber driver told me that I need to drive the Cassier Highway. So I might have to do another trip up here driving the Cassier, kind of more towards the coast in either my van or something else that I build out. But made it to our terminal, C1, heading to Seattle and then on to San Diego. So I'm just going to hang out here, wait for my flight. Really appreciate you guys coming on this trip with me. It's been an absolute blast. But I board in about 10 minutes from now. So I'll catch you guys when I land back in Seattle in about a week from now to get my van back.
right, we have made it back. We are in Seattle and we are en route to pick up the van at the port. It should be there according to my air tag, it's there and I called them yesterday. They said it safely made the voyage, so should be good to pick it up. As long as we can get there before four, it is 2.30 right now. We are 30 minutes away from the port, so we're cutting it kind of close. So what is the train? All right, I found it. Uber pickup is right over there, so we're gonna call it and get a ride over to pick up the van again. So the last five or six days, I've been at my brother's house, hanging out at the beach, relaxing, taking some time off, and now we're going back to the van for some more adventures. How's it going? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. There she is, back in the lower 48 in all of her glory. I ended up actually being five minutes late because we sat in an hour and a half of traffic here in Seattle, but I had called them when I was on the road, let them know that I was gonna be late, and they were uh, more than happy to stay 10 minutes late to uh, let me get the van, but we've got her. I checked her out with the guy, everything's here. She's all good, at least as far as I can tell. And she's all run, so. But it definitely feels good to finally be back in the van. Back down in the States and not having to drive 3,500 miles back to uh, California. So very happy that I decided to ship Tote, which is the company that I used, this company right here. It was actually really easy, a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. I was allowed to leave pretty much everything that I had back in the back of the van, drop it off, take a flight, and then come pick it up. So go through the security checkpoint and then uh, figure out where we're camping tonight. So I'm thinking since we're so close to Seattle, and the city. I think I might try to do some stealth camping. I might try the spot that I've stayed at before and see if we can stay there. It's right in the city center. And I really want to cook some Korean barbecue and I know there's this really good Korean market right next to where that camp spot is. So I think I might try to find a spot there, but those spots are kind of hit or miss. There's not very many and they're really popular. Last time I was there, there was a ton of other campers. So we might not be able to find one, but that's where we're going to try it first. If there's not one there, I'll try somewhere else. We're about 49 minutes away. So see you guys once we get there. Look at that, more traffic on the way back. All right, so I just realized on the drive over here that I actually had to get rid of my propane tank in order to ship the van. And we're heading to a Lowe's, which should hopefully have propane tanks for me to get so I can cook dinner tonight. Awesome, thank you very thank much. You. have a good one. You too. Propane acquired, off to the campsite. All right, so we're coming up on the street that I'm trying to find a spot to camp on. That's it right there. And then the little Asian market is actually right there. So hopefully we can find a spot because that would be very convenient. So this is where we're looking for right here, somewhere along the street in this general area. I think we might've found one right here. There we go. We fit in here perfectly good with a bunch of room on both sides. So this is where we're going to be camping tonight. Get out real quick. because we're going to go head over to the grocery store real quick after I move these bags out of the front so I don't get people coming in here trying to rob me and see what kind of food we can get. To cook some Korean barbecue tonight. This is the spot in this whole line of cars right in front of these abandoned buildings. I've stayed here before and there's actually another camper staying right there. So we aren't alone, but it does feel weird to be around skyscrapers again after being in Alaska for so long. So many people, so much traffic, definitely a lot less peaceful than it was up there, but it is nice to be back in the realm of civilization. All right, so they should have everything that I need here, but we'll see. And I think I'm just gonna grab a bunch of meats like beef, pork belly, and then make a bunch of sauces. And the only thing that I can't really make because you have to ferment it is kimchi. So I'm just gonna buy some. All right, I think we have everything we need. I'm not 100% sure, but it's not like we can't walk back over if we don't have something, so let's go check out. All right, dinner required. Time to head back home. <sighs> so since we were at a uh, Asian supermarket, they did have all of the seasonings that we would need pre-made. So we technically could have taken the easy way out and just bought the meat, bought the seasonings and been good. That's not what we do here on the Ryan's Toomey Van Life cooking show. So we got all the raw ingredients for all of the sauces and the different kinds of meat we're gonna make, and the different sides, and we're gonna make them all by hand. So, what I'm thinking for meat is we're gonna do kind of a bulgogi style steak. I couldn't find any frozen steak or any pre-chopped steak, so I got this. We're gonna cut it as thin as we can and do the best we can, but it's a lot easier to cut it thin when it's frozen. And then, of course, we're gonna do some pork belly, two ways, spicy and regular. And then I've got a couple things for sides. We're gonna do a spicy kind of squash salad, some kimchi, and then some sticky rice. And I got a little piece of uh, mango mochi for dessert. 
First things first, prep the meat, make the sauces, get them marinated. For the pork belly, we're just gonna take it and we're gonna slice it into little, maybe two inch pieces. And then we're gonna divide it up half and half between spicy pork belly and non-spicy pork belly. And then for the steak, I'm just gonna try to cut this as thin as possible. But when it's not frozen, it's a little bit more difficult, but we should be able to get it pretty thin. There we go. That should be good enough for a decent amount of bulgogi. So in order to make the uh, seasoning or the marinades for each of these slices of meat, I'm going to divide them up into different Ziploc bags. One for the bulgogi, one for the regular pork belly, and one for the spicy pork belly. And I'm honestly not going to do any measurements here. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it, but we need a good amount of soy sauce. Squeeze a bunch in there. And about a tablespoon and a half of brown sugar, some sesame oil, minced garlic, some freshly peeled and then grated ginger and then last thing we need is some pepper just grate up some of that in there and then just a very small scoop of some chili paste but I don't want this to be really that spicy so we're just going with a little amount here there we go then we can mix all that up and honestly I think I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to that too and we can take our beef throw that in there shake them up get it all nice and coated and we'll let that marinate for about 20 minutes while we prepare the rest of tonight's dinner. So for the spicy portion of the pork belly, we need some more fresh ginger, some of this hot pepper paste, and we're gonna go with a little bit more for this one because we want it to be nice and spicy. On top of that, we're gonna throw in some of this spicy chili crisp oil, just a little bit of soy sauce, not as much as the first one, a little bit of sesame oil, some honey, and more pepper, and that's it for our spicy pork belly. We'll take half of our pork belly, throw those in there, seal that up, and get all of those nice and coated. There we go, two down, one to go. So I actually think for the uh, plain pork belly that we're gonna do, the only seasoning we're gonna put on there is some salt, and then we'll just make a nice dipping salt for these guys and get these nice and coated on both sides. So we'll wait for that meat, I'm gonna chop up this cucumber and make a nice spicy cucumber salad. And I'm just gonna essentially cut this cucumber really thin into like little discs, season it up with a bunch of stuff, and that's gonna be one of our side dishes for tonight. So go ahead and throw those into the bowl. Hit them with some garlic, honey, and some rice vinegar, but we don't have any rice vinegar, so I'm just using white wine vinegar. Just a little bit of that. A little bit of sesame oil, salt, and a pinch of sesame seeds. And then of course some of this chili paste for some spice. And then we can mix that all together. And there we go. That will be our nice spicy cucumber side salad. So now that we've got everything all prepped and ready to go, I think this meat has been marinating for long enough, or at least as long as it's gonna get because I'm starving. Ideally, you'd let it marinate for like four hours or overnight. But now, all that's left to do is cook it up. I'm gonna get some water boiling for the sticky rice. And this is my favorite kind of rice to get because it's so easy. You just boil some water, place the whole thing in there, and in 15 minutes you got rice. And these things are even better if you got a microwave because they cook in about a minute in there. It takes like 14 minutes to cook when boiling water. I should probably hook up my propane first. Fresh tank. And I've actually got this secondary pressure regulator on here so that I can get the pressure right because the oven that I have is very finicky with what kind of pressure it wants to cook. So let's see if that worked. Beautiful. And we'll just let this get nice and hot. Throw all the meat in there, and then we're done. I'm cooking the plain pork belly first so it doesn't get tainted by the sauce from the other one. Here we go. One done, two to go. Bulgogi's up next. Bulgogi done, water is boiling, rice is going in. And take all this, pull that out of there. And then the last thing we gotta cook is a spicy pork belly, and man, it is getting hot in the back of the van. Look at that.
All right, and now that this is done, pull it out. And the last thing we gotta wait for is the rice to cook. And then we're eating. All right, so while I was waiting for the rice to boil, which I think it should be just about done, so I ran into the store and grabbed two of the uh, drinks they had because they looked cool. I got this one because it looked cool. It's a little cow with a peach for a butt. And then this one, which looks absolutely delicious, and it is a melon cream soda. So very excited to eat those with dinner, but now that our rice is done, we are officially finished cooking. Last thing we gotta do, add our side dishes. Starting with our kimchi, which I love kimchi. It is absolutely delicious. If you've never had it before, it's like fermented cabbage. Some of our cucumber salad. And then finally, some of that rice. Hot. <laughs> this looks so good. Look at that. Now that is a meal. So we'll take this, finish it off with some green onions that I cut while I was waiting for the rice to finish boiling. Throw them on top of there. And then finally, just a little bit of sesame seeds on each one. And that is it. That is a Van Life Korean barbecue bulgogi pork belly rice, cucumber salad, kimchi, delicious looking dinner. So let's eat. Genuinely, I don't think I've been this excited for a meal that I've cooked in the van in a long time. This looks so good. Korean barbecue along with crab are my favorite foods on the face of this planet. So we're gonna start off with some spicy pork belly. Actually, before I do that, I'll give you guys one more look at this spectacular looking plate of food. Oh, and I almost forgot my two drinks. There you go, cheers. That is so good. And I swear, this is some of the best rice that you can buy. That's the easiest to make. It's so much better than minute rice, and it's just as easy to cook. That's something I really want to make sometime, like fresh at home. I've never made kimchi by myself. I've always bought it. So I think one of these days, in a, maybe in a future video, we'll make some fresh kimchi. And that spicy pork belly, so good. And here we go. Let's give this uh, melon cream soda a taste. Oh my God. At the school lunches, they had this carbonated soda and I forget what it's called. I think it was like a clear plastic can with like plastic around the outside and it was some carbonated soda or something. And this tastes legitimately exactly the same as that. When I'm editing this video, I'll try to overlay what I'm talking about, but that is crazy. So I think I'm gonna sit here and scarf down as much of this as I can because it's so good, but I will spare you guys sitting there and having to watch me eat for any longer than you already have. So check in with you guys when I'm done. All right. Dinner is done. Got some leftovers. I wasn't able to eat everything. Throw those in my barren fridge because <laughs> I had to empty it out when I shipped it. So there's nothing in here other than what I bought tonight. For dessert, we've got some mango mochi and then our little peach milk drink, which I don't know what that is or if it is going to be any kind of good. And I don't really remember what mochi tastes like. I haven't had it in a long time. It's like super fluffy and squishy. What is mochi even made of? I don't even know. Real fruit puree, mango, mochi, water, sugar, glutinous rice flour, navy bean. Ooh, which is like, oh, I don't know if I like that. It's like a rice ball fig newton. Not really my favorite though. I am excited for this uh, peach milk drink. I'm guessing it's gonna be like a strawberry milk, maybe? Oh, maybe not. Tastes like watered down peachy milk almost. Not my favorite, not very good. Probably won't finish it. This mochi has such a cool like feel to it. It feels like a fluffy stuffed animal. But anyways, Korean barbecue, peach drink, mochi night. Like always, I have some dishes left over so we'll do those tomorrow or something. But it is officially nighttime here in Seattle. It's around 9.30, but I think for now, I'm gonna head to bed because it's getting late. I'm tired, long day of flying, driving, and cooking dinner, so I will catch you guys in the morning. First night back in the van was a success. You can see the sun coming through the uh, roof vent van, which happens when I sleep in and gets kind of annoying because it can shine right into my eyeballs in the morning, but stayed up pretty late last night doing some research. Um, I'm working on a few things, so slept in today. It's like 10.30. Typically, I like to get up earlier than that, but I'm gonna hang out here for a little while, get some work done, head over to the coffee shop, and I got a few things that I need to get on my laptop. And then for the next few days, I think my plan is going to be driving south from here up in Seattle, 
down to California in San Diego. So I think from here, I'm just gonna kind of head down the coast. I might stay more inland than directly driving down the coast, but I guess we'll see. But yeah, I'm not sure what my plan is when I get back to San Diego. I think potentially I might be buying another vehicle to build out, which I'm super excited about. And I think that vehicle is going to be a Japanese key truck, a Daihatsu Hijet specifically, that I'm going to be building out into a miniature truck camper. And if you've never seen those trucks before, you can go look them up. I think they look super cool. I haven't really seen anyone who's done a camper of the magnitude or style that I'm gonna be doing. So I don't even know if it's a good idea for me to even attempt it, but I think it would be so cool, so. I am going to head out and walk around until I find myself a cafe to get some work done in. So we're leaving the stealth camping spot that we stayed in last night. Actually, it was very quiet. Not a lot of cars drive down this road. So I actually had a pretty good night's sleep. As always, I truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. And I will catch you guys next time. <laughs>